Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are looking at a game between Stockfish and crowd favourite Leela at the Chess.com CCC21 Rapid Event which is uh, happening at the moment with uh, Stockfish leading, Torch in second and Leela close behind. Let's have a look at this game. It was um, a Stonewall Dutch, very interesting and uh, at a certain moment we got a Leela special, a move that... Uh, um, well, a whole concept in actual fact that only Leela plays, but that seems to have worked out pretty well. So let's have a look at how the game went. So, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, d4, c6, the triangle semi-slav. So on top of it being a, a Leela game, it's also a semi-slav as well. So Mr. Beads, Leela's greatest fan, will be absolutely beside himself, I'm sure. Um, and after queen c2, then f5. Um, Queen c2 is a, a bit of a cunning move order here. Um, the idea is that if black desperately wants to play a Stonewall Dutch with f5, then white gets the opportunity to play the move bishop f4. Put the, um, uh, the dark square bishop outside the pawn chain, can reinforce it afterwards with, uh, with e3. It's about the ideal structure you can have against the, uh, the Stonewall Dutch. So this is, of course, all the um, um, the CCC book, of course. So the engines uh, on purpose being given uh, slightly weaker openings in order to challenge them. Um, bishop takes d6. Um, actually, uh, e3 is also quite interesting because after bishop f4, e takes f4. Then, um, well, the, uh, the e file is opened uh, against this backward pawn on e6. And if black ever tries to blockade the e file, we could just move a knight from f3 and play f3 to kick it away. So it's quite a well-known uh, idea just to play e3. But bishop d6 is, uh, is decent. Takes e3, knight f6. Bishop d3, knight e4, knight c3. Knight d7 castles b6. I think we're getting towards the end of the uh, of the chess.com uh, book here. So white plays uh, rook a c1 and then castles. It's um, yeah. I mean these sort of um, uh, positions are um, um, quite pleasant for uh, for white, but not hopeless for black. Um, it's um, you know black's got always got um, quite a nice um, um, share of the center really with these pawns on d5 and f5 and a knight on e4. Obviously some weakened dark squares in particular the e5 square. Uh, black has a problem getting the uh, the bishop on c8 uh, active and developed. Um, and um, of course this knight on e4 isn't completely stable. This knight can move from f3 and you can play f3 to chase it away. But uh, in general this is not such a bad version of this, um, um, of this position for, uh, for black. So um, b4 was played, um, uh, threatening uh, the move c5. And uh, the move c5 is going to be quite nice because it'll block the bishop on c8. Basically... Black would ideally like to play c5 at some stage and uh, open up uh, this diagonal for the bishop. If you're going to get in c5, then um, that's not um, really going to work out uh, for black. Now, of course, uh, black can take on b4 in this position. This is uh, not impossible. Uh, the refutation is not like 100% clear. Um, we can take on d5. Um, e takes d5 would be ideally what black would want to play um, but here we can take on e4 takes or rather d takes e4 i think and then queen takes c6 hits the rook on a8 rook b8 and then we get out of the um, um of the uh, double attack there knight g5 and, and white's quite a bit better here queen e7 something like knight e6 um, the best move in actual fact after c takes d5 is to take on there and then white's got a nice initiative you know something like knight b5 we're threatening knight c7 forking these two and if knight f6 we can do something like knight c7 rook b8 and knight e5 and we're threatening knight c6 we're threatening f3 the queen's a little bit vulnerable it's um yeah i mean huge compensation for um uh, for white basically although probably not um, not winning yet uh, the engines didn't want to go close to that, basically. Um, they just liked uh, uh, Leela's move, bishop b7. Um, and now, well, yeah, my engines, uh, a number of them wanted to play uh, c5 already. But uh, a3 is quite, um, is quite sensible there, just defending the pawn on b4. And after queen e7, well, Stockfish followed up with, uh, with c5. A little bit weird uh, doing it in, in that order, but I suppose, you know, the, the a3 is protecting b4. So if black ever goes a5, well, we're already covered against that. 
So, um, yeah, I mean, black has to decide what to do here. Um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty solid. This bishop on b7 is uh, is passive. At least, you know, we've got it developed, protecting a pawn and uh, connected the rooks. That's better. But uh, black needs to look for some counterplay somewhere. Um, now, you could play e5, but um, that's it's possible i mean stockfish did that in one of the games the only problem with that is that um you take white goes knight e2 and white has this lovely square on d4 for the knight it's uh, you know slight to clear advantage for uh, for white um what leela did is much more um um stonewall duchy actually he played the move g5 and that's always very typical in the dutch i mean you you've got this central space so you know the natural thing to do then is to try and gain more space and getting it on the king side with g5 very very typical uh, quite i played quite a lot of uh, stonewall duchess when i uh, came back from um, um from uh, a long break from chess and uh, was looking for some sort of uh, kind of uh, strategical opening that didn't need too much theory to play and the stonewall dutch really um fitted me very well i was inspired by uh, a game of botvinix which we actually analyze in uh, re-engineering the chess classics it's the game uh, sabo against botvinix where botvinix really showed a lovely grasp of the opening and uh, well basically with that just with that one game it basically got me uh, some very good wins against some pretty strong players in actual fact but g5 92 and then this move g4 always looks a bit funny to uh, play g4 you know weaken another uh, dark square but uh, playing g4 makes it harder for white to, to chase away a knight on e4 with f3 because uh, well you take on f3 and what's white going to do he's going to take on here which weakens his own king if he takes back with a piece then the knight on e4 is safe so yeah gives away some uh, some dark squares but also makes this knight on e4 much more solid now this is a really interesting moment actually because after knight d2 we get a move that only Leela played and it's it's pretty uh, yeah pretty sharp pretty tactical um yeah the engines were were looking at uh, playing e5 here um so that's both dragon and stockfish um and then f3 knight takes d2 queen takes d2 and the uh, dragon in particular was wanting to play gf3 rook f3 e4 rook check king h8 bishop c2 rook f6 knight f4 but this was really very pleasant for um for white i mean you uh, you get the queen over here the bishop comes round here you get ideas of knight h5 of b5 um stockfish was winning a huge amount of games with um with white against uh, against dragon here what leela does is is pretty interesting uh, kind of um uh sort of stimulates uh, you know tactics to happen really so plays b takes c5 here b takes c5 and then e5 and um uh yeah i mean the idea simply is that um well black is claiming that uh the black is going to have the b file when um um if you you know play like uh, dragon did or stockfish did against dragon um uh, then uh, f3 we can take on d2 we go e4 we'll get the bishop on a6 we'll get the rook on b8 we've got an extra avenue of counterplay there However, the big problem with this is that, um, well, white also has some tactics. And, uh, yeah, amazingly enough, Leela um, really, um, you know, spotted some, uh, yeah, some gorgeous tactics and also evaluated that the end position was, um, was actually going to be good. The interesting thing is that playing its own move, um, e5, uh, Dragon was just losing game after game. You give it the Leela move and Dragon starts drawing games, which, uh, you know, I found was, was quite impressive, really. So after e5, Stockfish played the very sharp tactical idea, bishop takes e4. We get f takes e4 and then knight takes e4. Why knight takes e4? Well, after de, we've got queen b3 check, four king, the king and the bishop. But um, yeah, there's a, a lovely tactic, very unusual. Um, bishop a6 in this position, just pinning this knight to the rook. And after knight d6, we go e takes d4. And, uh, well, it's a bit of a problem for white. Um, black's threatening d takes e3. And if you go um, e takes d4, then queen e2 just wins a piece. So Stockfish played knight takes d4. Exchange sacrifice. Takes on f1. Knight takes c6. Queen g5. And rook takes f1. And, uh, yeah, I mean, looking at this position, I was not feeling very happy for, uh, for Leela, really. I mean... Um, you know, OK, you know, black's exchange up, but um, white's got two pawns and we've got, you know, a weak pawn on um, on D5. Oops, on, sorry, on the uh, ah, wrong button on D5 here. Um, we've got a wrong pawn on uh, a weak pawn rather on uh, on G4. Everything's open. I mean, these knights are really strong as well. So, um, yeah, you know, wasn't feeling too confident, too happy. 
But Lila was reasonably cool and, um, well, certainly uh, held it very nicely. So takes, takes, queen e2. Um, hitting the um, uh, the pawn on g4 there. So um, h5 and then h3. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is... Um, Black's got to be really careful here. Um, I mean, I suggested uh, queen g5. And then the engines were just looking at taking, taking, going g3. And then just lining up on this d5 pawn. And then the g4 pawn is really, really weak after. Basically, you know, the engines were just ending up winning lots of pawns and having, uh, you know, knight and lots of pawns against a rook. Um, what Leela did was incredible, really. G takes h3 in this position. So, you know, well, I mean, G takes h3 will also open up the white king. But, I mean, the black king's what I'm really worried about with uh, a knight so close. And uh, f4 was very nice from uh, Stockfish. So um, not taking back the, uh, the pawn immediately. Chasing the queen away from the defense of the pawn on h5. And also opening up a line for the rook. Uh, and uh, yeah, Leela's defense, it just feels like, you know, desperately holding on to uh, Stockfish's coattail somehow, or Fishtail even, um, because it's just enough, always a small pin, just enough to hold things back. So Queen G7 was played, playing threatening Queen G2, so you haven't got time to play um, Rook F3 yet, so Rook F2 from uh, Stockfish, just preparing King H2, and then we'll be able to bring a Rook to G2. And now d4 from, um, from um, uh, Leela. Uh, e takes d4 and then queen takes d4. Queen h5 and then h takes g2. And this was the one that really amazed me because uh, after all, you know, you're, you're just one move away from total catastrophe from black. And the only thing stopping it is this measly pin on the, you know, the king on, um, on, uh, on, on, uh, on the rook on f2 to the king on g1. But actually it just isn't really possible to, to to really you know get that going after king g2 um the engines were playing a5 or even a6 um just with the idea of bringing a, a rook over and a rook over to g7 just a cover like that which is uh, quite amazing um you know king queen g4 king h7 check king h2 rook a7 just in time um and um yeah you know we're going to be fine there and uh, the really clever idea is knight b5 for king uh, these two and I had to look at this one a, a little while. Queen f6, we just go. And after queen f6, well, rook f6 would lose the rook on a7, but we've got rook h7 check, ah, followed by rook f6. And, uh, well, white's got two pawns for the knight. It's, um, you know, sort of balanced, but it's nothing more for white. And the engines agree to draw here. But what, um, what Stockfish could do was to play queen g4 check. King h7, queen h3. King g8, queen g2. So we're getting that pawn with tempo and also protecting this rook with tempo so we can move our king away afterwards. King h8 played. Um, actually, in all fairness, uh, queen g7 would have been possible too, which looks very <laughs> most reasonable to me. But king h8 played. And after king h2, then queen g7. And, um, well, it's not really... Um, um, it's not really... Uh, um, that possible for, for white to do very much um if you give a check on h3 i'll just go queen h7 there was one nice idea which was knight f7 check and then actually um uh, my engines even wanted to do this simply rook f8 queen g2 queen h7 queen h3 and then yeah uh, you just uh, play rook f5 takes and takes and there's no way that you can um uh, protect both this pawn and this pawn you can go rook c2 but then i'll just take this one and then come back and block and my king's going to be quicker uh, to get to the c pawn if you go c6 i just go rook c5 yeah i mean that's always the thing that uh, that's that's really difficult that engines do so easily of course which is to to calculate uh, not just the main line but the side lines as well which uh, are often complicated but uh, queen g7 played king g7 king g3 king f6 you I saw a lot of positions like this in uh, in the alpha zero stockfish match with stockfish always you know managing to uh, to somehow hold these positions you think oh you know a couple of pawns for, for the knight could be promising but uh, here this one um, you know doesn't look so amazing because of course the pawns are all split and uh, well that makes it hard for um, uh, yeah to really push it through without getting hit by checks from uh, from rooks so king e4 was played by stockfish rook b3 a4 king e6 just blocking f5 king d7 and uh, well this is great the king can stop uh, this one attack the pawn on c5 and this rook's already well placed to stop the advance of the pawn so a5 king c6 f6 king c5 king e5 rook e3 check knight e4 and now the king um, finds its way back 
to the pawn, rook e1, knight g5, rook a1, f7, and after takes king f6, rook f7, knight f7, and the engines agree to draw. Uh, yeah, Stockfish didn't rate his chances of winning rook and knight against rook against Leela too highly, and who can blame him? So there we are. Very interesting game, I thought, in the um, in the Leningrad Dutch. You know, very good version of the um, uh, Leningrad Dutch, sorry, Stonewall Dutch. Um, very good version for White. And uh, this plan of b4 followed by c5, very typical and, uh, you know, very strong. But I thought that Leela's way of finding counterplay with g5 was, uh, was very nice. And, uh, yeah, this move b takes c5 and e5, very sharp calculation. Um, looks incredibly risky, you know, this position with the... Um, uh, where white sacrificed the exchange for two pawns, not even a material ba you know, d deficit, really. Weak pawns everywhere, strong knights. But, um, yeah, somehow, you know, Leela managed to, um, um, to hold it together. I, I guess that really, you know, this pawn is quite key, really. It restricts the white king. And, um, you know, this is, you know, also an attempt to open the white king, but also an attempt to free the white king. And, uh, well, you know, in the ensuing um, uh, tactic somehow, you know, White's King was kind of as exposed as uh, Black's. But I am frankly amazed that um, uh, that this turned out to be, um, you know, to be really holdable for um, for Black because it uh, feels to me like, uh, you know, really, really difficult position. But, you know, Leela held it with, uh, with consummate ease. And, uh, yeah, these positions with a knight and a couple of pawns against uh, a rook. As I said, I saw loads and loads of these in the Alpha Zero Stockfish games and Stockfish was holding... Uh, uh, a huge amount of them you know alpha zero was sacrificing a lot of uh, exchanges in that match in those uh, in those games and uh, yeah well stockfish proved an expert at uh, at holding slightly worse positions and exchange up so there we are hope you enjoyed that little flash from um, from the ccc got some more games from there some very interesting ones uh, uh, taking place uh, some interesting ones from torch as well so do stay tuned for that and obviously we'll be having a look at the TCC as well. Got some great games from there coming up as well. So uh, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new books, Silicon Road, Chess Improvement. That's been out for a while. And also Re-Engineering the Chess Classics, which is really, really good. Hopefully out on Amazon very soon. It's been taking ages and ages. And otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching and hope to see you at the next videos. Thanks for watching.